Alright, hey, hey, Zemig here, and I'm shooting a video about my uh, Garmin E-Trex 20 here, the good old Garmin E-Trex 20. So this is the first GPS that I, that I no, nah, that's not the first, it's the second GPS that I ever owned. I I have a Garmin Nuvi 765T, but um, this is my first, like, kind of, like, you know, adventuring GPS and it's seen a lot of action a lot a lot of action and so over the years um, these the buttons on the e-trex they've deteriorated is what's happening here so so there's a rubber uh, there's a rubber case that goes around it okay and that's where the buttons are so the buttons basically have these little the actual buttons are actually inside the unit okay um, the the buttons here are just they're they're just like little extensions that actually that point to the buttons. So so after a while the rubber it's it's made out of rubber the the little extensions um, they deteriorate after a while. So as you can see, my back button is not in the best of shape, and my power button is not in the best of shape. They still it still kind of works, see, but it's it's ready to fail. Um, the menu button and the down button are still okay. But the up button, up button almost doesn't work anymore. So you can see, you can see there's a little crack on the button. So uh, what I'm trying to do today in this video is I'm trying to fix those buttons. Okay, um, the best thing to do would be to get a new uh, rubber, rubber kind of shell for the uh, the E-Trex. But uh, the problem is uh, I emailed the uh, Garmin about this. And they said they don't sell parts for the Etrex 20 anymore because it's they don't they don't make it anymore. I think they make I, I think they make the 20s or 20x or something, um, and it looks like it's the same thing. So I don't know. Um, they told me the best thing to do is just to buy like a used one or something that still has good buttons and then trans transplant it to this or just buy a new one. But uh, I want to see if I can fix this one day. Okay. So for that. Um, so I, I found out I found this out from a website. You can actually make new buttons for it. Um, so I'm gonna give it a whirl. So I got these here uh, erasers. Um, it's like a it's kind of like a one of those pen type erasers that you can force it in and out. Well, I bought this at Daiso for a dollar fifty, and um, and it has like a little refill on it, and that's what I think we're gonna use for the buttons. Okay, and then. I found this stretch self stick sealing tape. Um, this is kind of like a rescue tape, sorta. It's like a, it's kind of like a, it's like a sticky tape, but it's not a sticky tape. Um, you just kind of like stretch it, and then it it sticks on there. And the good thing about this is it's it's waterproof, so um, that's definitely one thing you're gonna want with the E-Trex because the E-Trex is supposedly water waterproof or water, yeah, what it is waterproof. And then I got some scissors here to help me cut the tape. Okay. Okay. So the first step would be to uh, cut out the old buttons. Okay. To do that, I'm going to use my good old X-Acto knife. I couldn't find my dull one, so we're just going to use this. Okay. So we basically got to cut out the uh, the sections that uh, are um, are bad. Okay. Okay. So. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these the buttons out. This was the worst one right here, so this one already has a hole in it, so One piece there. Okay, so that's the actual button in there. I'm trying to get it out. So you see the you see the button just kind of just floating around in there. 
Okay, so there you go. So I cut it open, and then I... Um, so this is the bad part right here. Oh, wait, I cut myself. Damn it. Okay. So that's the bad part right there. So this is the part that actually touches the button inside. So if you look inside there, there's a button right there, okay? I can't believe I cut myself with this knife. Okay. Whatever. Alright, so that's the that's the first button we're gonna make. Go get, you wanna go get your eraser? Um, yeah, just try to find the smallest, thinnest eraser that you can get. Um, I would suggest using like, you know, those um, those clicking pencils, the retractable pencils. Um, the ones with the little pencil lead and stuff. The, they have these tiny little erasers in them, you know, on some of them, the fancy ones, so. That's what we're going to use to do it. Okay, so you're going to want to get this to fit in there. Um, and it looks like it does fit in there. Okay, good. So you can see when I'm pressing it, you can hear it clicking, right? Okay, so what you're going to want to do is cut that maybe about the same height as the other button. So I'm going to cut it like right here or something. So probably be a good idea to use a cutter to do that okay so probably cut it a little bit long and that so you can make it size you oh wow that was really soft this is a really soft eraser okay so I'm gonna cut it a little bit more it's a really sharp cutter too okay. a little more as you can see it works. Okay. Okay. At this point, just, we're just gonna try to shave it so it. Don't try not to cut yourself. So I'm just gonna sh start shaving it little by little to get the size that we want. Okay. It's actually just the perfect size. Um, let me go. Let me see if I can get a measurement for that for you guys. Okay. I've got a little uh, ruler here. Okay, so anyway, this eraser, this eraser is perfect size. Um, it's about it's about half a centimeter, so it's about five uh, five millimeters is how how uh, the diameter of this guy. So it's it's the perfect size. So I managed to get the right one. I was looking, 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 and I found the right one. So, so there you go. I've actually got my button right there. Okay, so we got our first button made. Okay, so we found out this is a five millimeter uh, eraser, and it works perfectly. Uh, I'd imagine you want to get it just the right size to fit in there, so it doesn't have any slop. Um, but I think when we put the silicone over it, it should be fine. So I think. I think that's okay. Maybe we can slice it a little bit more. Slice it just a little bit more. Just a teeny tiny bit. Just so it's about the same height as the other ones. Just slice a millimeter off. So that's why it's good to have a really sharp knife for this. That's why I'm using a hobby knife. not super flat but it's okay so if you want it super flat just put it on the other side because the other side was cut flat I don't really want it super flat though I actually would like it rounded a little bit okay you got it so so really the part that went bad let me see if I can find it 
like that. Oh, here. So this is the part that went bad, okay? And the problem is it's too short now because now, now the rubber on the outside has deteriorated. So it won't hold this little button anymore. So this is the actual thing that presses the button. It's a pretty hard rubber too. This this rubber is kind of soft, so I, I don't know how long this rubber is going to last, so we'll find out. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and make uh, two more buttons, because this this one is kind of halfway there, and this one is getting there. It's pretty sunken in now, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and speed up the video, and, uh, and I'll be making the next two buttons here. This one, these two, I'm not going to mess with because they're still in good shape, so uh, when we get there, I will go replace these buttons, so... This is a good inexpensive way to replace the buttons on your um, your e -trex. Now, if the actual button inside is messed up, I this it won't will not help. Okay, so um, you're gonna have to uh, if the actual button's messed up inside, you're gonna have to actually open it up and install a new button. But the mechanical button part, okay, the little extension or the pad here, this is a this is what we're replacing. Okay, all right, all right, here we go. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut a bunch of buttons out that are this length. I'm going to use this one as a template now. So, um, yeah, so there we go. Okay, so I've got done making the buttons and stuff. Um, yeah, just you gotta play around with the length to get the right size. It helps to take the battery out too, so you don't keep on turning it on. Um, for some reason, this back one kind of gets hung up sometimes, but like I said, you gotta play around with it. I think it's better. It would be better if you had like a square eraser, you know, but um, you just don't want it to move around a lot in there. But it works. All the buttons work still. It's good. Okay, that's good. So it's pretty much repaired already. So all we got to do is cover up the buttons now. Okay. Um, so I made the little button extensions, and I have plenty of spare button material to make it with. Okay. That's about how much we used right there. I made four of them. I think one of them I made too short. So. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is we gotta seal this up. Um, so it's waterproof. So we're gonna use this stretch self tick stick sealing tape um, they also sell something called rescue tape it's much thicker than this though um, this one looks like it's about the right size so I got this at Daiso also for $1.50 so he's gonna make a loves to shop at Daiso man. I love Japanese dollar stores man they're the best okay, okay. so this is some really it's sticky but it's not sticky it has no adhesive on it so that's the good thing Yeah, so it's just really it's really sticky but it's not like it doesn't have an adhesive sticky um, so we may have to cut it just the right size is what I want to say so we may want to you know what I think it's about the right size yeah I might just want to try that okay so I'm gonna wrap it all the way around. Ah, you know what I think I have to make it a little smaller so let's just wrap it all the way around it first I'll cut it 
a little shorter because I think it's too wide. The cover won't go back on if I do that. Um, say about that much is what we need, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it right there. You're supposed to kind of overlap it anyways, you're supposed to stretch it. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is make it a little, cut a little bit off of it to make it thinner. Okay. Try not to get it too dirty so it still sticks. There's a kind of a plastic backing of this. I want to remove that. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Why all sorts of lint and stuff gets caught on it. Okay, so you're gonna to want to probably we'll start start here at the top. Pull it really tight. Okay, I can see that we probably could have got away with not um, not cutting it so thin. Just stretch it on over. It's really stretchy. We might be able to overlap it twice. So I didn't quite get it that one time. So basically you just want to go over the buttons. sticks to itself too. It's kind of annoying to work with. Okay, so once I think once you overlap it once, it'll be pretty happy. It'll stick to itself. So this is the most important part. This is the part that you want to make sure you get a good seal. Yeah, man, this stuff is super stretchy. sure it's trying to touch itself too. Okay. All right. Well, I don't know how well that's going to fit on my mount now, but <laughs> there it is. So there's the light button. Maybe I put it on too tight. Nope. I think it might have been better if we didn't cut it at all. See, this one's not doing anything. is this one right here. I think the other one's the tape stressing on it too much. I can feel that one, I can feel that one. I can't feel that one. It's not clicking. This one's not clicking either. Either oh this one. This one works still. So I might want to try taping it again. Okay. Okay, let's see if that works. Power button works. The back button doesn't work again. The up button doesn't work. 
down button doesn't work, the menu button doesn't work. Unfortunately, this only works for the power button, I don't know why. I think it's pushing on the it's pushing on the button too much. Yeah, it's too bad. The idea was good, but it seals it nicely. But the top buttons and the side buttons, the the button the two buttons on the top that we replace don't work like this. So only the power button works. Maybe we gotta shave it some more. We can try shaving the button more. Let's try that. Okay, I'm gonna try to wrap this again, dude. So you see, this stuff works pretty good. Um, you just, I think, you just have to get this the right size. So I'm gonna try cut this one a little more. Okay, there we go, it works. Not bad. Oh, dropped it. <laughs> it's hard to grip one. So, I don't know, there's a little but, bit of the button exposed there. But I had to put it on, I had to put it on really loosely on the side. That's all I'm saying, dude. Because it, it would just, it'll keep on pressing on the button. Um, so you're gonna have to, what you're gonna have to do is, um, just keep on shaving it. Keep on shaving it piece by piece at a time. You don't want it to stick out too far because this, when you when you wrap this stuff around the the button, it uh it presses against it. So, if anything, you probably want you probably want it to be like just the right size. So right there, it feels good. I can feel I can feel a good click right there. Same with this one here. So, so you don't want the buttons to stick out too much if you're gonna use this stuff. Okay, uh, it looks really good. If you if you wrap it right, you know. Um, unfortunately, I didn't do a very good wrap job on it, so it looks a little ghetto. But uh, let's see if it works. Uh, I'll probably try wrapping it again, but for now this will work. I'm not sure it'll keep the water out and stuff. Hopefully, it'll last a while. the The power button is the only one that could be raised a lot, so this one. So, like I said, you're gonna have to play around with the height. I think maybe a good thing to do is maybe shave it some more and then then wrap it on tightly. But this should be, this should keep some of the um, some of the let's keep the water out and stuff, you know. But it's really I put I put it on really loose here, okay. But anyway, let's see if this works. Uh, I'm gonna go put my batteries back in the uh, GPS. I might try playing around with this some more, maybe. But... So it takes some practice to get it the right length, the right height and everything. Okay, so there it is. Power button works good. Okay. The button, turn the lights on, hit the back button. Back button works. Um, let's try to play around with the map. Okay. Okay. Menu button. Back. Map. Back. Power. Battery's about to die on this. Um, back. Back. Zoom in. Zoom out. Zoom in. Menu button. I didn't mess around with the menu button at all. So, so there we go. It works. It works pretty good. Uh, I might want to try wrapping this again and playing around with the height. But yeah, so there for the most part, that works pretty well. Um, alternatively, you could just put a bunch, put some uh, electrical tape or like a duct tape on top. It would help seal it also. So, but uh, I think this worked pretty good. It doesn't have any you know sticky adhesives or anything. You know, it's easy to take off. Um, yeah, so so I'll give it a whirl. So that's how to fix you fix the buttons on your uh, Etrex uh, 
uh, Etrex GPX, your Garmin Etrex GPS, if uh, if the buttons have deteriorated and uh, and you want to make new buttons for it. So um, at some point, I'm probably gonna have to replace the menu and a down button. So, but uh, but yeah. So I just had to do the three there. So just remember the height. You know, this is a five millimeter. You could probably go with maybe a six millimeter uh, uh, diameter um, eraser. Okay, this one is kind of soft too. You might want something a little harder, um, but it's okay. So, cool. So there we go. My GPS works again. Yay! Happy. See, every time you hit the button, it makes a mark. Makes a name. All right. So thanks for watching. That's how to how to make new buttons. Hope this helps somebody out. Okay, I revised it one more time, and I, I feel like I got it. So it's still kind of loose on this side, but I made this one, like, it's nearly flush, okay? And it works, so. Um, basically, what I did is I pulled the tape until it, it loosened up a little bit. And then, yeah, and then, so that's, that's the best I can do. Power button works. Back button works. You can hear it clicking. Up button works. Down button works. Menu. Oh, the, uh, these two we never do anything with. So, but yeah, it worked. It worked pretty good. Uh, so, uh, whether uh, uh, how waterproof the the GPS is, uh, it's probably not that uh, waterproof anymore. It's it's not it's not waterproof. It's water resistant now. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, it's okay. I never really take get this thing super wet anyway. So, but um, yeah, it should be able to handle some rain and stuff. So. As long as it doesn't get into the buttons and stuff, so I think uh, I think it'll be okay. So uh, yeah, everything works good. Click, click, click. So you'll know it works fine when uh, when you click click like a normal button. If it kind of does nothing, then then yeah, you're you're all bad. <laughs> so so yeah. Okay, so this one I had to make it recess a, a bit so it wouldn't interfere with it. Hopefully the little eraser doesn't get lost in there. That's what I'm worried about. And then, then you got no back button. So, but uh, yeah, we'll have to, I'll have to actually test this out on the dirt bike to see, you know, if um, if like the shaking and everything, uh, it it messes up the buttons. So, hopefully it doesn't. All right, so there you go. That's a, that's a little, that's the last part. <laughs> we go. I feel like uh, I got it how I want it.